Not ready. Doc here from North America. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And it's probably almost Saturday in a few places. So how was Friday's trading? <laughs> Tell us about it. Uh, let's see what we're going to have today. It looks like we see some strength in there in the uh, in stock indices. And we're seeing a little strength in the euro. We're st still seeing, you know, we're going to go to the fact check sheet. Line 14 there. You can see that four, uh, 8 by 4 so and it's matching up with uh, what we're seeing here on j4x and a little, well a little rolling over here and then you can see on ours on the chicago quant stuff we can see the same thing it's it's uh trying to do a little rolling over here but all holding up very well on the daily buy green dots i think we have uh, green bars perfect everything's looking good and you can see the the angle is heading north and we've climbed from those 112 80s and 90s to the 114s so where's 54 i hope he's been listening and he hedged off what we suggested and that is sell some puts against your long puts and if you want sell some calls against your long calls but as long as we're in a weekly buy you've got to be you got to be try to be more neutral if nothing else you can be a little long but don't be short and that is a synthetic short you have on you short the calls and long the puts so all right, uh, let's see, what do we got else can we say about that? I guess not much. I saw an interesting headline, you know, if there is a story to match, you know, we always try to find what might be the story. It's always hard to say because usually price always, pretty much always precedes the news anyway. But uh, I understand that Mr. Trump has made it so that the European students can still travel to the States, but the Chinese cannot. So, I don't know. That might be a positive push into the currency. We'll see. Uh, what's next? Let's see. We've started off. I guess we started off at 28 after instead of right on 830. So, for anybody just tuning in, that is the euro. The euro is holding up in its daily buys. You can see on the Chicago Quant, it is very comfortable in the weekly buy where it just swooped down almost went into a weekly sell and straightened itself out uh, going in from last week. And then uh, so we've been consistently in this long from here, you know, or let's put it this way, this, this, the trend signal has been a long from in here on a week-to-week -week basis. Uh, the daily obviously does its little ins and outs. And as someone said to me yesterday, uh, you know, you will look at a five-minute chart and it's a bearish chart. You look at a 15 or 20-minute chart, it's a bullish chart. He says, you know, which time frame do I follow? I said, the, the one that you back test and practice every day. And until and uh, this way you stay focused and you stay organized and follow your rules. And that's who you follow. And so in this case here, you can see the overall weekly trend is up. The Obviously, the daily trend is going to be different. It's going to be more short term. And it goes in and out. And obviously, if you were looking at an intraday, it would be even more of an in and out. So... That is what it is. All right. Uh, let's head over to Cable. Let's see what Cable's doing here this morning or this afternoon or late Friday evening for some of you. Let's see who is ringing there. Um, let's see. There we go. So now let's go over to. Well, that is a message. Oh, I see. There we go. And let's just type this in. Is so more accurate. Oh, kidok. So now let's go find the cable and see what she's doing here. I did look at it earlier, and cable was you know, kind of sliding. You know, we are in that one week sell. We are in four days of a sell. So you can see that there on line 13. So it, it's feeling the pressure there. Now let's uh, switch it right there. You can see the same thing. Kind of, you know, it's like sloppy action, you know, nothing too exciting. Just, you know, the classic summertime blues and there we go there and so you can see there um 
that uh, on the on the J four X, you know, you got a uh, couple of red bars and a green bar, and you know, it's kind of joining in with our work. You can see it's moving down. The lines are moving down, just like you know, our lines are kind of sideways down. You know, so it's they're matching up fairly well. I like this. This is this is a big help here. This is this does help compensate for my dots, um, which is really good. You know, it uh, gives the the trader at uh, Ducascopy or anybody using J4X a chance to have a, a little bit more emulating to our math. So that's really good, and it's really nice how the uh, the uh, the hinky ashy matches up to our red dots and green dots uh, about 75% of the time. That is really good. So that's a real good that's a good percentage, really high percentage there. Um, let's see. What's next? Let's take a look at this on the, the fact that it made that bottom there, just like the bottom here, and it's trying now. In this case here, you can see it's selling off, but it hasn't. It has not depreciated. In other words, the price action itself hasn't taken the cable down so deeply. So the next trend, when they start to get into the buy, they may go after that. See where here they topped out, and they weren't able to go after these highs up in here into the what's that the 28s. Maybe the next move up might bring it up into the 28s, at least in the, the high 27s, something like that, you know, just up in this area here. And do we have any questions? I don't see anything. Let's see. Let's double check. No, nothing. It's really quiet. All right. Um, everybody, you know, TGIF, thank God it's Friday. So, I mean, I guess everybody's like kind of chilling and uh, just kicking back and just hearing just looking at the numbers, watching the charts, and seeing what we have to say. All right, now let's drift over to, uh, what was I going to do? Yesterday we kind of an analogized this to, to drift into Canadian. I guess what it is, we do Turkish, Canadian, unless someone asks for something. And then we go into NASCAD and then oil, and then bounce back to Swiss and yen. All right, so let's try Let's see if we get that guy like that. Okay, so there's uh, another story too, and I saw Turkish lira, so I quickly, you know, put the Turkish lira up on the screen about two hours ago, and nada. I mean, just not moving. I mean, look at that. And I think that yesterday's uh, conversation I had about it, you know, discussing it here on the webinar, I'm really convinced that we're we're seeing some type of. Uh, I think. There's some type of global game going on now. I think that uh, there's obviously some negotiations, and the central banks are supporting that currency. That's the only thing I can figure. It doesn't make any sense any other way. It looks like to me the the uh, the central banks have locked this currency up. Look at that. Look at that contraction. You can see our math. You know, not counting this tightness in here, but look at the tightness in here. You know, our our time manifolds have not not seen anything this tight in a long while with this product look at that I mean it's uh, when's the last time there, look at that distance right there just right there where I'm you know now look at it. it's it's that tight over a whole month that's like a couple of days you know a switch in direction tightness and it widens up again switch in direction it widens up again not in this time this thing is holding very very tight so something's uh, the only power I know on this planet, you know, financially that can do this is is the central banks to lock a currency into a tight range like that. So that must be what's going on. They must have come up with some deal, and we'll see it over the next few months. We'll probably see whatever it was. Aragon will be doing something that the Western nations are more inclined towards, and you know, something like that. You know, it'll be there'll be something going on there. You know, because I saw the news this morning where they turn the, the museum into uh, are going to turn it into a musk and, and the, I supposedly everybody was like no no don't do that don't do that and it's like well guess what they're doing it and there's no no action in their currency from it so that says to me that uh, that is just part of the firming up his base you know that's that's what I said yesterday the logic to me now is it's the central banks. There's a deal made between uh, uh, you know the Western leadership and the central banks to help out the Turkish economy, and that's the only thing I can figure that it, that's what that is. And so they'll let him firm up his base, and then he'll turn around. I don't know, six weeks from now or a month and or 
two months from now and do something that everybody says that they never expected them to do in the positive side. And that's that's how it'll all play out as far as I'm concerned. All right. Uh, that's just the guessing game we do. But we do trade the quant first. Worry about the story later. Let me get a drink of water there. <clears throat> the story is always the secondary. We were always trying to guess what that might be. And so that's the only thing I can figure <clears throat> for such an obvious action going on. All right, now let's uh, drift over to... We'll take a look at the Canadian. Usually the two of them function together. Um, why, I have no idea. But um, And you can see it is sideways too. Same type of sideways action you know, compared to the wilder action that it's had. Um, and I think you, know, you can see a couple of red bars there. And I think... Uh, Let's see, where are we on the Chicago quant? We'll find it in a second. Right there. You know, two red bars, the same, right there. And now we're generating a up green, but notice the, uh, what is it? The um, histogram and the white line are below the zero line, so it's still in a cell. And you can see the way this thing's diving down here. So, Canadian is in a cell, which is line 20. And so we are a couple of days in the cell there, two days, and one day, one week in a buy. And where is it in the weekly now? So the weekly is trying to drive back underneath. We're trying to push that back underneath. That's interesting. Um, you'll see what kind of pressure is, evolves from that situation. I'm just going to give a refresh to my chat line just to make sure nobody is chat trying to contact me and I'm not seeing it there we are nope chat line is empty oh empty oh so let's see well, that's that's cool there <coughs> now let's drift over to oh wait you know what uh, one of the interpretations we always do is we look at this with oil so I'm assuming that oil is plus for the day right now, or firm. And I think it did close in a daily buy, didn't it? Yeah, it's three days in a daily buy. So it's 10 weeks in a daily buy, go, uh, crude oil, and three days in a daily buy. So let's take a, just a fast look at oil. We'll just throw it up on the J4X. And then we'll zip over to uh, NASCAD just to you know, see how it's all playing out there. Let's see. Right there. There we are. 40.63. What is that? Is that down a little bit? Up a little bit? Sideways? What is that? Crude oil is down 14 cents. So that's all that is. That's, and we're getting ready to switch to... Oh, I see. That's... Did, the, did that do it already? I guess that's what we're looking at. It's That's the September crude oil is down. Okay, so... This is the August contract. We're going to flip that into the September contract on our machine. Uh, maybe we'll do that today. Let's do that now even. Let's see. Where is it at? Let's just see if there's any. Let's go to this and see what it looks like on our system. There we go. And it's holding, holding pretty well. Uh, pretty much unched. You can see all the green going on there. And September is now the front month, so let's change it on there too at the same time. See if it shows any characteristic of ch that you know any overall characteristic change. I doubt it. Um, let's see CL, and that would be the U zero. Whoa, we lost that. What happened there? Let's see CL U. There it is. U zero. We'll do the same thing there. And close. Yeah, see, it doesn't even affect the lines. Went into the sell there, went into the buy there. Oh, I guess it did. It went a day earlier there. <coughs> and then went into the buy there, went into the sell, went back into buy, sell, buy. And it's holding up pretty well in there. Just a few cents off. Now you can see the weekly is even more firm in many ways. Let's see if we can tighten this up a little bit. Same spot. Went into the weekly buy there. Okay. 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Uh, that is that with the crude. And it's doing the same thing, too. There's a lot. Like I said, we we usually throw the caveat that it is the summer. And so you don't really want to try to, like, jump in on any particular trend in particular because it's going to be short-lived or it's not going to be – there's no – the power that was in it all of a sudden disappears and you're like, oh, man, I, I was ready to trade it again. It was it was running. You know, it was exciting. And I'm going to short that. And then all of a sudden it just sits there, stares at you like a puppy. And so that's – you got to be careful with uh, trading this time of the year. It uh, – these four to six weeks are is, is part of that 8.5 out of 10 on us. That's that one and a half. A lot of it is that this these four weeks can really disrupt the average uh, and, you know, brings it down into like the sevens and the eights and things like that. So. All right. Uh, and then over on J4X, same situation is looking fine there. All right, and now let's drift over to let's see what's gold doing. Gold's up 720. All right, now let's look at NASCAD, the currency pair trade that seems to be totally aligned consistently with the oil market. NASCAD, right there, there it is. And it looks like it's just flat to firm. Oh, let's see. No, it's not firm. It's red. And where are we on that one? That is line 24. Yeah, line 24. So we are eight weeks in a buy and four days in a sell. Okay. And that makes sense there. And let's see how it looks on our work. NASCAD. There it is, right there, NASCAD. And so, yeah, it's the same thing. Falling down. Um, you know, nowhere's near the strength that it ha has had in it. And at this point, um, you know, just a little weakness in it, a little weakness in the, goal, uh, the oil, but it's not really selling down into a sell. It's just a little weakness, but the currency has reflected it by being in a sell for a few, a few days in the... Uh, the intraday so now let's uh then from there what is it so we go canadian nascad now and then uh so that kind of resolves looking at that oil complex in a sense so we go from turkish lira to canadian because they seem to match each other and then at the same time oil seems to be involved with the turk uh, the canadian so then we go and look at the canadian and see what type of action is there and that's what we're seeing there. Alrighty. Where do we go now? I mean, with no questions. We have no questions. Nobody has any questions. So, what should we do now? We go to gold, I guess. No, no, what we're doing is we're going to... That's it. We're jumping back into the currency. We go to dollar saltine. That's what it is. And there you can see there a little pressure on it this morning. You know, it's heading down. Uh, line 21, seven weeks in a sell and two days in a buy. And they popped it up, and now it's knocking it back down again. You know, it's amazing. This this hinky ashy is going to match our our dots. It's like about 75 percent, 70 percent. That's really good. Let's see. Um, See now, let's put. Oh yeah, let's put it up here now. Let's take a look at the Swiss saltine, right there. And you see, it's trying to get into the daily cell. You see, the weekly is not changing course at all. It's holding up very firm there on the downside. Um, with the summer month. Here, I would assume that it could be just, just slow, steady, sideways action. That's pretty much all I see there. Um, let's see. What is that? That's nothing. I'm seeing. Some, what is that? 488. It's down. Huh. I'm trying to figure out what that is. 
Oh, that's Netflix. I see. That's what that is. Netflix is uh, still down a little bit from yesterday, but not as much. Uh, I think it was down a little bit more, maybe $15, something like that. And silver is oh, just unchanged. Isn't that interesting? Okay, now let's uh, go to yen. Let's see how the yen looks right there. There's the yen. And there's a little bit of firmness there. But again, that product too, that's line 19. As you can see on the fact check sheet. Uh, where's that? Right there. 4 and 11 in cells. So this thing is is not really... But then look how tight the range is. So you can't really say it's like, oh, well, they're really selling it. As much as they're just not doing any, anything with it. I think that's more what it is. Uh, you can see the weekly buy is right there on the edge. You can see the daily. Well, it's been four days sitting on the edge. Um, I don't know if there's any conviction to get this market to go anywhere. It doesn't really look like there's a lot of conviction to it at the point. So uh, the next, I guess the next thing to look at here is really, you know, uh, let's let's look at that let's look at I guess the next thing to do is let's take a look a broader view look at that I mean pretty much there's the virus situation and it's you know it's kind of put itself in a range I mean a really tight range and you would assume that that would be like the nature of a lot of this stuff they would find ways to go into a nice tight range uh, you know for the summer months here which is normal we talk about this every every this time period every year it's irritating, but it's it's a fact, you know. It's the way it goes. So, um, I guess no questions there. We'll just keep on moving along. Let's go over to. See, we've done all the currencies. So, if there's any currency anybody wants to see, just give a yell. Oh, you know what I want to check out? Let's check out that that GBP, JPY. Right there. Let's see how that's doing. That seems to be really locked in a presidential cycle. We're going to start to see some type of direction. I think if, if this thing starts to move up, I think that's how it works. That's going to be just more affirmation for Mr. Trumpy. Let's see how it looks on the chart. I really have a hard time understanding or believing that he's going to lose anything. We are hearing a lot, a lot of people who normally don't talk politics are talking like, politics and they're saying really positive things which is really strange normally they don't talk about politics at all and if it wasn't for the media just beating a drum all the time on the negative uh, you know it'd be a little bit clearer but it looks to me like he's gonna do very very well uh, you can see here it's in a weekly sell for one week right there so let's put that in there too we didn't even look at it It looks like it's trying to climb right back into the buy again. But look how tight that market is. And there's no real conviction here. There we go. And it's a pink, isn't it? Yeah, it's a pink. There we go. So it went into the cell there. And now, now I'm... Phew. I guess, you know, in many ways, you know, when when you look at the Turkish Lira, the Turkish Lira is not that far off of the same characteristics we're seeing in a lot of different products. I think that's that could be even more. The story I keep on thinking may mean something, may not, but as far as I'm concerned, I think it, it does since it flattened out first. There must be something going on, but there's a lot of these products that are going flat. I mean, there is... There is no conviction whatsoever in a lot of these products. The ranges are tight. I wonder if it's a relationship when you really look at it, like countries that with larger GDPs, you know, it, they may be flat, but they they um, have a wider range. And the ones with a really low GDP are flat and have a tighter range. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it worked that way. That would make sense to me. Alrighty, now zip over to gold. Let's see what the gold looks like. Wrong place. Let's go. Okay. And then right there, let's see what gold's doing. I saw it up seven and change. 
right there. And it's trying to get into the daily buy, which is nice. Showing some life there. Holding up very well in the weekly. So the metals are trying to turn up. And that's, uh, I, I don't know if you would call it really turn up or just firm today and then, you know, week tomorrow, that type of thing. I think that's usually the way it goes. That does seem to be the recipe there. So we can see that. Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at a couple of the metals here since no one's really tuning into anything particular and not asking any questions. Let's check out silver. Silver is a little bit firmer and only up a few cents, but holding up looks like the weekly will hold up with no problem, and looks like the daily will hold up with no problem. Interesting run. This thing has gone from the. Uh, 1750 area to the 19 area 19 and a half area two dollars which is like a 200 hundred dollar move over the same time period and it's that that is uh, june and you look at gold let's go back to gold real quick and the same thing in june in gold gold went from 17 and uh, a quarter i guess you could say 1732 18 you know it's I wouldn't call it a uh, you know it's a, it's a, it's underperforming the silver that's for sure um, you know it's a, moved up about ninety dollars eighty dollars something like that whereas uh, silver has gone up over two dollars which is a lot lot higher percentage you know now let's look at let's take a look at copper See what copper is doing. And there's copper. Now it's been in a sell for a few days. I had gone into buy here, went into a sell at the top here, and uh, I guess that needs to be moved over one like that. And uh, it hasn't really gone anywhere since. Holding up very well in a weekly. It's been in a weekly buy for a while. This is the August copper. And then I saw a platinum. Let's go find the platinum. There's platinum. Now on the platinum, we're in a weekly sell for three full weeks going on a fourth. Uh, the product itself went into the sell down in here. It was at eight, $808 area. It ran to the, what was that, 820 no, 888 area. So it went into it went into a weekly sell here. Got a we were in a daily buy here. It's really thin. Look at that. And there's your daily buy. So you couldn't take a short out of it, and you're sitting there going, "Wait a minute, I want to short this thing. It's in a sell." But you couldn't do that because you're in a in the buy on a daily basis. And then here you finally get the sell. It doesn't really go anywhere in particular. I guess it goes down 15 bucks. Closes at uh, 40, 47. The low there is 25. And it's trading at 36. So since it has gone into the, the buy, or the sell, the weekly sell three weeks ago, uh, this is the fourth week now. It really has just been nothing. Nothing with it. And let's see what that the the weekly buy was awesome. I remember that. Uh, let's remove that, remove, and remove that, remove. And I think this was where it went into the weekly buy. Let's check that one. Is that plus and a minus? Okay, so here's the weekly buy. So it went into the weekly buy here, and that was a decent move. I remember it was an exciting move. I mean, it went into the buy at the, uh, what is it, the 7 and change? 775, basically, something like that. 773 there, but just say 775. And within a week and a half, or two full weeks, it, it had blown up into the 9, 
17. So what's that? $140 move. And at the same time, we climbed into the daily buy here and caught pretty much the whole move. That was interesting. So the two of them were aligned to be long. So the metals have been all over the place. They have not really found anything too, uh, you know, not, I mean, they're all, well, what's odd is that this has gone into a weekly sell and, you know, it might have done it in here somewhere, but it's gone higher than it's gone down. I mean, in the beginning it went down. Well, no, actually it did not. Oh, that's really the biggest loaf since it's going into the sell there. And uh, it, it's not, you know, it's it's not a, a winner in any way whatsoever. It's it's a a dud when it comes to the actual just following one of them. But when you follow both of them, that's where you make the money. Because it, you know, it gives you the all clear sign. Remove. There we go. Very thin. Now this is October. And I would imagine, you know, I mean, I guess it's more of a back month. I'm not sure what the front month of this would be. I thought it was July or something like that. So it, it might be the July contract. I remember it goes like April, July, and then October. It's almost like the old option cycle. But there's no real, real action going on here in the metals in general. Matter of fact, let's go back to silver. And, I, and we're, we've been watching the silver, Robin and I thinking that we're going to see something out of it. And it is, it's firm. There's no doubt about that. But it is not, you know, it's having the hardest time in the world to get into the 20s. It just doesn't have that energy at the moment. It, it may find it. I think the longer it goes that it doesn't go down, that will put more pressure for it to go up. Ooh, look at that. Netflix is only down $34 now. It was down $60 last night after the earnings came out. Um, so there's the metals. What's, what's going on with the metals? Now, let's take a look at the stocks. See what's going on. Let's go right over to that Tech 100 and seeing, uh, seeing how they're treating everything this morning. And there it is right there, the Tech 100. Showing some strength there. It's higher today. It's up, but this is showing down. Let's go and find it on our quant. And we got a green dot going here, and, and we are above the daily buy. Yeah, interesting. Very interesting. Oh, matter of fact, it's showing us that it did that yesterday. So this will definitely put it into the buy right there. Cool. Now, remember, this is like, you know, that that net that uh, tech 100 has all those hot and heavies, Amazon and Google and Netflix and Tesla and Apple and so forth, Microsoft. You know, it's got uh, Facebook in there. It's got all the hot and heavies that, that you know, the uh, the markets are watching. And you can see weekly wise, we've been in a weekly buy for a long while in that product from since back here in April out of the March lows. And uh, you can see here, um, you know, the, the red candles to some extent are matching up to our dots, which is cool enough. It's better than nothing, you know. And um, let's see, what is that? That's four. Hmm, interesting. And so that's where we are with this. Is, and then obviously this white one is a red dot on ours. That's a, That's what that is right there. And then that red dot there, it's a white one. So it's interesting how it tries to align itself. Now, these whites seem to occur at the beginning of a, of a turn in the market. And I guess it, that was the turn. And we don't really see those whites do that on the upside. Now we'll see how they play themselves out there. Um, and it'll be interesting. You know, we could take a look at, I bet we could put Netflix up there. I want to see what Netflix is doing. It's not an intraday. We're just going to put the daily up there. And just get a peek of it. I can see it's down thirty-four dollars. Right there. 
and you can see there's the lows yesterday of uh, 504 I guess it is I guess that was the New York close and then they drove it down hard from there and it got down sixty dollars and now it's down thirty four dollars so I'll see what they do with that today that is today right there so it's trying to lift up they're using the high of yesterday too that'll straighten out Let's see if we can fix this and we'll worry about it later all right and you can see the pressure on it right there oh you can't you can see the pressure on it right there still hasn't pushed into a weekly sell though so you know, this thing has that potential to pick itself back up and get going again I mean earnings only have so much influence there's a I guess the best way to describe it is, is that there is a asset inflation right now not a currency inflation but an asset inflation so assets are the things that are you have to have a boatload of money to buy because they're very expensive because there's no other games in town there's you know on on planet earth there's a lot of money and a lot of funds and they need to buy something and to stay in business they've got to be doing their thing so they are buying these very highly inflated assets and it doesn't seem like there's any end to it it really doesn't all right now we'll close that and we'll go back over to there and that's the uh, NASDAQ is trying to lift let's see what the S&P 500 is doing doing the same thing but it's been in a buy for a few days and you can see on the spreadsheet it's really you know mixed company there one's in a weekly buy for four weeks and a daily buy for three that's the S&P the Nasdaq is a 14 week in a buy and five days in a sell so it went into a sell on Friday of last week and I guess it was Friday today's the sixth day and it's been working its way down ever since alright now what other things can we take a look at? We haven't looked at in a while. Let's take a look at uh, like wheat. There's wheat. Well, you know, here's one. Is uh, we got uh, soybeans seven weeks in a buy. Let's take a look at soybean. Where are your soybeans? It's a ZS. Or there's November beans. And you see, way back there they went into the buy. And what is that? That's the uh, eight. 60 area and they've climbed as high as 908 so it's about a 50 cent move and then which I think is uh, was at $12 a tick so 10 ticks is 120 six times so you're talking about $720 win and then you got your ins and outs where it goes into a buy here a weekly buy we're in a daily buy it goes up makes a nice move all the way up to uh, what's that like 885 that's a 25 cent move we get it into a daily sell which is one back here now it didn't go into a sell there because because uh, it had a green dot so it stayed in the buy we can get rid of that that's where it went into a sell and then it went back into a buy. So we go like that. And then put the buy back in here, like so. And then it pops up again. Not much of a correction, just a day and a half of it. And then uh, gets into a sell here. Has you taking profits again and not catching the sell off here. And it puts you back into the buy here. And maybe you missed 10 cents and then catch the rest of that action and then it makes sure you're not in there for this little sell-off again <laughs> so that's how you combine the daily and the weeklies together you watch them and you use the dailies to coordinate with the weekly
and in this case here, it's been a good win. It looks like we're going to hold up to an eighth week when it comes to soybeans. Who else is over there on the grains? Let's see what the grains also have. Uh, corn's in a weekly sell coming in this week. Let's take a look at corn. There's deck corn. No, that's uh, uh, August corn. So we went into the sell Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, it's Friday. No, this is Friday. Yeah, two, three. That's that's Friday right there. So it goes into the cell here, goes into weekly cell, and then it falls down. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's right. And they're not filling in. Where is it? There's just yeah. So seventeenth is not in there yet. Um, why don't why we're not seeing the seventeenth? Let's see what we can do here. Let's just take a look at deck corn. Maybe September. Now the September corner still has to be alive. So let's just take a look at that. And it's trying to lift up today, but then you can see here it's doing the same thing there. Interesting. And so it caught a nice little move on the downside, which was here's a classic. I was I'm choking on the words even. The Chinese came in and bought corn this week, and we went into a weekly sell, <laughs> and they came in and bought. So the money knew that they were coming in to buy, and they pushed it up onto the anticipation, and then after the fact, they sold it back down again. I always find that to be a really, that's why I'm always playing with the stories, trying to figure out what they are, because it is amazing when they do that stuff. You know, I was saying that to Robin. I was like, wow, the the Chinese are buying this week and they've sold the, the corn down. And that's that classic buy on rumor, sell on news. And you can see someone knew here that they were buying in. You know, the, the lines had gotten across. We had a green dot. We had that red. We just had to wait for the next you know, couple of hours and then you could get into it, got into it somewhere in here and caught all that move up. And then um, in here you could take your profit and put it back into a buy here and then back into a move to here. And then we went into the sell on Friday and you're short for it. So, and again, like I said, that's how you follow the math, the, uh, the, the Chicago quant stuff. Interesting. Um, what can we do with Chicago? Let's go with J4X. Oh, there's Suey Beans. Let's see how it looks there. There's the Suey Beans. Um, that's going to be interesting. Another week of buys in the Suey Beans. Uh, that's a, obviously a positive thing, not a negative. Hmm. All right, now last of them all is the Wheaties. Wheat is in a weekly buy for a week. Let's take a look at that. That, 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 that. There's SEP Wheat. And you can see it went into the buy here. Daily buy there. What is that? That's uh, 495 Even so, that's uh, four, 516 and um, then it goes to what is that? That's 551. So anywhere from 34 to was it uh, 34 to another? It's like uh, 51 cents, especially with the weekly right there. You know, on Friday. So the buy there in the 20s even. Um, you know, anywhere is in, let's see, so the, that's one, two, three, four, and five. So any, buy in here, and it still gave you um, a good 20 cent win. Nice. It still seems to be holding up very well. Looks like it's going to be a second week in the weekly buy. And that's impressive.
and that's where we are out of it all. Um, that's so that's the grains, which is interesting. You know, it's up on the spreadsheet. We just don't get a chance to look at it. Isn't that amazing though? Line eight copper is eleven weeks in a buy. Crude oil ten, and gold is five, and with silver two or something like that. Let's see where silver is there. Silver is one. It went into the weekly buy. That's right. It slipped into weekly sell and went right back into the weekly buy. Natural gas ten. Let's take a look at natural gas. Ten weeks in a sell. Right there. And I know Dukascopy does it too. Let's find natural gas in there. Right there. I'm not sure exactly what the increment is, but you can see it matches up relatively well to this action here. A little, little odd. Um, you know, our, I guess it's is that right? Let's see what that is. I'm not sure what this exactly is. <clears throat> the gas prices here in the states are much lower, but I do know that they're doing that, and you can see that that up move here, and then a breakdown from there, and that's ours right there. And uh, this is not popping up. Maybe it's not. Yeah, that's the 17th. And that's the 17th there. Now, natural gas on a week-to-week -week basis, you can see. Uh, let's do that there. We went into a weekly sell way back in here. And then it you know, was in a daily sell, so that was pretty good. You could catch the rides down and we'll take a profit and catch this ride down again and then take a profit and catch another ride down so it's been pretty good overall um, the whole the whole oil uh, natural gas thing is is a strange d dance that goes on with the Russian Federation and uh, Europe especially Germany I really don't understand why these guys can't figure something out but they seem to be constantly in conflict on something I guess that's the European way I guess that's why they, they have wars there like that that are devastating. God, you know, it's almost like there's a plot against Europe. You know, somehow or another they allow devastating things to happen to the European and uh, be it East or West Europe, you know, turn into a devastating thing. There's definitely like bad juju going on there. There's no doubt about that. Some, some uh, witch doctor from uh, Haiti has got uh, something going on there. They've uh, got a lot of dolls. They must be putting pins in them or something in European leaders for 100-plus years now because it does seem like th they've done their best to turn that whole continent upside down. Uh, let's see. What else can we look at on this spreadsheet and on the J4X? Let's find out. That, look at that bottom, though. That, isn't that interesting? Look how the way natural gas has hit a solid bottom in there. took a little while to get us some green. And there it is, but it's not really climbing up much. Same thing is happening there. See that? That's smoothing out the math there. So, but the weekly is perpetually in a cell. Boy, there were days where natural gas was a eight dollar product, you know, a cubic foot, nine dollar, eleven dollar, seven dollar cubic foot expenses. Now it's trades at a buck and a half, a buck and a quarter. I think it got down to ninety nine cents at one point. It got down so low that, uh, can you imagine that? Now there was this, I guess, a trader out of Canada that, that had everything locked up for a long while. And what it did is it slowly, slowly figured a way to uh, get rid of that trader who made billions and then lost all the billions. And he was trading the back months. And doing them in some unique spread concept that held up the back months. And people thought, oh, wow, you know, I can buy this product. And the end result, the back months collapsed. And when they collapsed, the rest of it all collapsed. It's funny how that happens. Uh, so that's that's it when it comes to the natural gas. It's, it's uh, doing a good job of trying to climb back into the buy. But I don't know if it's going to. Obviously not this week. That's for sure. And you got the colder months coming up soon. So I guess there'll be some type of uh, futures contract purchasing just to, you know, just to guarantee that they have inventory. I guess that's how that works. 
Uh, now, let's see, what do we do here? Let's go to, well, let's look in the spreadsheet, see if we can find anything on there. Bitcoin, maybe? Bitcoin's a real sloppy situation. You can see there, four weeks in a cell and six days in a cell. But when I look at it on my charts, let's see, if, let's see if we can find it on uh, Dugascopy first. I thought I've seen it. There it is right there. Okay, so you can see, <coughs> excuse me, overall, you can see that the, uh, it's trying. Let's put it that way. <coughs> it is trying. It's trying to uh, go down and it's doing a good job at it, but it's not doing it with any real enormous fanfare. We're not seeing like, you know, two and $3,000 moves. It's just a slow, steady burn there. Uh, a lot of red, a little green there, a lot of red again. You can see it's been reds for days, just like our daily sell signal there for five days or f six days, something like that. And uh, ours is going to be going on seven, and this thing is going to be going on seven. Or this is going on six, that's what it is. So it started a day late. And again, a white bar before it all started, which is very fascinating. Um, the lines are heading towards the bottom of the range. And then, let's see which one is it? Is it right there? Yeah, it's right there. And then, let's see what it looks like on Chicago Quant right there. I think that's, and that's July. Okay. And it's been in the cell since back. Where's that pink line? I think it's back in here somewhere. I don't think we put it in. No, not there. If I move. I think it's up in here. Let's see. This would be, uh, what does it say? Four weeks, right? So uh, that's uh, five total. So it was this one right here. So we went into the cell there, but it hasn't really gone down that far. There's not not a lot of action in it. I guess you know a lot of confidence in the marketplace. So it went into the cell off of this area here, up in here, which is in the nines. It's not even the t it was touching the tens, <coughs> but it's definitely in the nines. Oh, we're getting a little frog in the throat, aren't we? And uh, so you can see that the the pressure is on. Yeah, it's on. But not deathly. It's not deathly pressure. They're not, you know, sending it down 3,000 points or something like that. It's just become quiet with the rest of the summer. So the, the cryptos are finding a way to be just like the rest of the, the marketplace. In the summer months, it gets slow and quiet also. So, and we had a sell, and then for three days, and then went into a buy, and then we went back into a sell again. <laughs> Curious. Okay. Uh, what else is on that spreadsheet that's worth looking at? You know, we didn't look at the Zulti, but the Zulti is only two. Is there anybody else in the longer term? Euro GBP. Oh, there's one Euro Aussie. That's we know that plays the uh, opposite side of the stock market. It did go back into a daily sell, and we are seeing the stock markets, you know, up for the day. So that matches up. Let's see. I guess the only other one that we could look at that had any fascinating would be the uh, Euro GBP. So let's take a look at that. Euro GBP. Right there. There we go. And then let's see. We go here for Euro GBP. And you see, it's been in the buy since here. We just don't even look at it anymore. We used to follow it. It was we had a couple of people that cared about it. So we'd follow it more. Also, Brexit really made it more entertaining in many ways. So it's been in the buy there. 
it has gone up. It does seem to have some, you know, three and four day runs, which are interesting. Tried to go to the cell there, but didn't seem to have much conviction towards it. And then before you know it, it was finding its way to go back up again. So, um, let's see now. I guess that's about it with the, the, the whole products here. Let's see if there's any questions. Nothing. Quiet day. Let me just make sure it says hi. <laughs> Is anybody out there? Oh. That's not it. Let's just go back to that real quick. I just want to make sure the chat line is working. Trading right there. Now let's throw high in there. H I. Where do we chat at? Is it there? Oh, I got to sign in. That's what it is. Okay. Hmm. Oh well, I'm not signed in, but I know I'm. I know that I can see myself live, so that's good. So that is a good thing there. So I guess the combination I can hear myself. So I guess people had a chance to ask questions, and no one did. I guess that's the way it goes. All right. Uh, what should we use for the title of today's webinar? I guess that's a big question, and we'll just call it a day since no one seems to. It's TGIF, and they don't. Don't uh, everybody wants to be chill? How about if we go like we looked at all the weekly numbers this week? Because that's what we did. It's very rare for us to get a chance to look around on a Friday, and look at everything, and we did. That's so cool. Because I don't really take a look at everything all the time. I am focused in, you know, a, a narrow range. Let's see. So we will say that we, uh, uh, let's see, um, let's label it silver holding firm. That sounds pretty good today. We did look at silver, and we looked at a lot of the products. But if I put in there something like uh, Doc's round, weekly roundup, they'll be like, "Oh, you were, you know, you didn't have any." Ah, there we go. We got somebody saying hi. Excellent. So, hi to you too. We only have a couple more minutes, so if you have a question, fire it out. If not, we will catch you on Monday. But it seems like it's a silver thing today, and we'll just classify it as a silver thing and. We'll take a look at silver as it goes out the door and Doc goes out the door. Where's that at? Right there. Yeah, holding firm. And yeah, nothing spectacular. But it has been holding up very well throughout this whole event. Silverado. Silverado. All right. Anyway, this is Doc from North America. Everybody have a safe and smart weekend. And we'll catch you on TGIM, which will be, thank God, it's Monday. And that is pretty much the name of the game here. So, happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you.